Hello everyone, this is Bradley. So today this is a preset tutorial talking about a new preset I've done, which is called Helical Connections. So let's start. If you have watched this channel long enough, technically speaking, you should be familiar with this Helical Connection node because I've used that in many different tutorials. However, I said that this is a new node because I completely reworked it. So it has a different implementation and the functionality has been different has been a little bit different as well. So basically the entire goal of this helical connection node, for example, is I start with a curved circle. And I want to create a kind of a spiral structure along this curve. So it's not just a spiral or helix, but it's a spiral along the curve. Okay, so it can be any kind of a curve. Uh, you can hand made a curve. It can also, it's also expected to work. Okay, or you can create a kind of rope structure along this curve as well. Okay, and basically this is kind of the result that you can see. Uh, it can be more easier to visualize if you start to have a bevel curve. Then you see this kind of structure, increase the radius. Okay, there are many different usage of that. For example, I've done rope animation with that. I've done expanding helix animation with that. I've also done DNA structure, trail deformation animation. There are lots of different usage of this entire structure. And uh, so I think it's kind of very interesting note to present. So today's goal is to introduce you this new implementation, talking about its difference compared to the old implementation and the, the benefit we actually get. So here is a node tree which is doing a comparison between this new and the old implementation. And basically they are doing the same job. Okay. And uh, you can see the difference that the top one, which is the older one, uh, is costing much more nodes compared to the bottom one, which is the new one. Okay. So you might think, yeah, definitely the new one is costing less nodes. So it's more efficient, more easy to build the node tree to get the function. So that's the benefit of that. Actually, this is not really true because uh, in many of my tutorials, I'm talking about this helical connection. You can realize that this is a routine setup. So for a kind of long time, I was thinking, why don't I just put all these kind of four nodes into these group nodes, okay? This is very interesting to think about because um, for this kind of helical connection node, I do not really expect you to know all these kind of details inside because I expect you just to take that and use it, okay? Uh, by the way, on the other hand, I've actually discussed all the kind of implementation details of this helical connection node, which is essentially a loop node so that you have to, all these kind of subunits and you have to duplicate again. So one of the limitations of this kind of loop node implementation is the amount of spirals are limited by the amount of uh, group nodes that you duplicated. So here I have about 30 nodes, which means the maximum amount of uh, spirals is 30. If you want to have more spirals by any chances, then you have to go into this group node and keep duplicating this kind of subunit and then doing the linkage. Okay. But uh, this is not uh, as difficult as it sounds like because you can really do that as I've shown in the loop node tutorial. Okay. On the other hand, I think in real life, you barely will really touch any spirals more than 30. So the iteration limitation is not really a limitation in my opinion. So what's the really the reason I choose to do the new implementation? So firstly, we have to recognize that this new implementation is using a completely different method. There is a no loop nodes involved inside whatsoever. Okay. So there is no loop. This is the kind of interesting part. However, we're going to break down these new nodes later. Firstly, I would like to discuss the difference. Why do I prefer the new implementation compared to the old one. So let's start with 0 to A, uh, in which we're having string to curve nodes, which is basically converting all this kind of text you typed into curve objects or curve geometry. Okay, and uh, here is a switch node which is outputting either the old implementation or the new implementation. So let's look at the old implementation here. You can see there is a kind of connections between characters. So this illustrates kind of a problem that in the old implementation, it only works for a single spline. So even if it's not connected, 
then it will try to connect all these kind of spawn together. That's why when we have a different separate text object or separate curve geometries, then you will see the kind of linkage in between. So this is kind of a huge limitation of the old implementation. Okay. Now, if we switch to the new implementation, um, by the way, I just realized that uh, these, the time, you can see the old implementation cost maybe about uh, 113 milliseconds, but the new implementation only cost one milliseconds. So this is a kind of new finding. Not only its performance is much better, but also you do not have lots of, kind of linkage in between anymore. So let's go to our next example of a zero to B, in which we're basically having a kind of a spiral because uh, we're trying to do the helical connection on this kind of curved linear node. Curved linear node is basically just a resampled curved line node. Okay, so it's kind of a straight line. It looks kind of just a spiral for now, but uh, knowing that we can switch this curve linear to any kind of curve node, uh, for example, curve circle, as I've mentioned, quadrilateral curve is also an option. But uh, just to know that uh, you have to increase the resolution so that for float range to work. For example, take a resample curve and so on. We can take a length uh, as a zero to one. And there are lots of different uh, ways that you can play around with that. I'm not going to uh, discuss too much here. Okay, let's just stick with the curve linear. Okay, so basically my main goal is to do something like the rope animation. If you have watched the uh, old animation and the tutorials, if you have watched the old tutorial, then you will realize that uh, in order to make a the spiral on the top of this spiral, I used a separate loop node, and it's kind of a uh, troublesome tutorial if you do not have enough experience with loop concepts and so on. Okay, but in this helical connection node, you just duplicate the helical connection, and immediately you can have the spiral on the top of a spiral, and uh, definitely you can keep continue doing that so that you have a spiral on the top of a spiral on the top of a spiral. So you do not need to do any kind of loop functionality. So this is kind of a very handy part, uh, which also leads me to remake the old tutorial because I think this is very important. Also kind of a game changer. Okay. So to conclude all the benefits and differences, basically the performance is much better compared to the old system. It can work with multiple spline and it does not require a loop. Okay, so these are the very interesting parts of these nodes. But uh, what's the implementation method that leads to this interesting behavior? Okay, so we're going to break down this node. So here again, we go back to the curve circle and this is single helical connection. So this is the routine setup to work with yet. The reason I do not include the float range inside this helical connection is because I do not want to make this helical connection looks uh, even larger because these are lots of settings. Okay. So, uh, how did we actually achieve this helical connection node? It's very simple. In fact, I've just discussed this uh, new helical connection in my stitching tutorial several days ago. So we're going to break down this again. Okay, and the whole concept is actually kind of very simple. So we take a curve to match the code. Okay, and uh, usually we take a curve circle into the profile curve and we determine a single curve to match. However, think about the, the another way. If I take a instance on points and I instance curve circle on the top of curve circle, it does not uh, show anything because of this warning sign it says instances in input geometry are ignored. So basically you cannot input an instance. Uh, so you take a realized instance and immediately you have this kind of, uh, it is, it's kind of a similar to the structure that we've seen before. But in reality, this uh, is different because it's more kind of overlapping geometry. So let's tweak some parameter. Let's take this resolution down into maybe three, four, five or something. And uh, then let's increase the radius. Then you can see it's not actually a single curve. It's actually three different curves. Okay. And basically this is done. And by increasing the resolution, then you increase the iteration. 
So in our old helical connection, we are definitely doing kind of loop function by duplicating the group nodes inside. In this new method, we are just changing the iteration of these instances. Okay, but how can we make this into the spiral? It's kind of fairly simple. You just take a set curve tilt, and by manipulating the tilt, then you are rotating that. Here, you can take a blue range node, which is not included in our helical connection node, and you put in this tilt, which is step is one, which means for each vertices, then you are increasing one degree of tilt. Actually, it's not a one degree, it's actually one radius. I do not know the conversion, but basically um, 2 pi means 360 degree. So one radius is, I don't know, maybe about 180 degree. But I, anyway, you can do the conversion at all. But you get a kind of idea. Usually I try to use the TAU, which means 2 pi. It's not very obvious here, but anyway. Okay, so you can try to play around with this kind of parameters, then you can get a kind of idea. There is a one issue that you realize, because our curve circle is a cyclic curve, so when we're trying to do the curve to mesh, it will also try to make it a cyclic. So when the start and the end is not a full circle, it will cause a very weird issue. In this kind of case, I do not know how you can solve that. You can take this reset spline cyclic, as I've mentioned in other tutorials, to make it a not cyclic while starting and ending is trying to overlap in itself, or just to try to do two times tall so you get a full circles or a times two again, and so on and so forth. You can try to play around these parameters, but the implementation is quite very straightforward. It's just a maybe one, two, three, four, five, six, six nodes in total. Uh, in reality, it's kind of more difficult because I have to consider many other things, like uh, which options are exposed, which options are not. But uh, generally speaking, this is how it works. I think I'm going to remake some tutorials about these helical connection nodes, uh, so that you can get a kind of idea how new implementation can replace the old tutorial. But uh, basically, that's it. For the in the meantime, I'm still keeping the old implementation because uh, so that you can replicate the result from all the tutorials. But knowing that uh, in the future, that this node should uh, completely replace the old implementation. So I think that's it. I think this is definitely a chaotic tutorial involving different node trees and the terminology. But uh, if you have any questions, please comment below or ask it in the Discord server. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.